From downtown, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Police say it was no accident. A deadly fire inside a Waterford Township home being investigated as a homicide, and it's because of what witnesses saw right before the smoke started. Jason. It used to be that block of Woodward that they shut down and brought the food trucks in. Now it has an official name and an official plan for major improvements. We'll tell you all about it. The corruption probe targets top brass. The FBI raids the home of UAW President Gary Jones. And that's not all. All coming up, but we're going to begin with breaking news from Sterling Heights. A construction worker run over on a job site. Jermont Terry live at Van Dyke near 14 Mile with the latest. Jermont. Karen and Devin, we know a 62-year-old construction worker was rushed to Royal Oak Beaumont with injuries, severe injuries to his head after a car accidentally ran over him. Step on out of the way, I want to show you that Sterling Heights Police, they are focusing their attention on this manhole. Apparently, the victim, the 62-year-old, was looking down this manhole. When you can see to the left, there are some cars. An uh, individual in his car was backing up and apparently did not know that the man was looking down this manhole. Manhole, and that's when everything took place. Um, as I talked to Lieutenant Bastinelli with Sterling Heights Police, he says the, vic the suspect and or the individual in the car, he stopped immediately and was a little distraught by what happened here. I don't, I don't know if he uh, truly realized uh, exactly what happened because uh, you know, the subject was you know, lower than the vehicle and, and in the parking lot. So, um, I mean, obviously, you know, once he was aware of the fact he struck somebody and ran him over, you know, he's, he's quite shooken up about it. Uh, he was responsive but uh, he had severe injuries to his head. So he was transported to the hospital immediately. And no update on that individual's conditions. As you can see, several of the construction workers who are now doing some work on this Aldi uh, grocery store that is under construction, they witnessed what happened. They came to the 62-year-old man's aid. But again, that individual severely injured with injuries to his upper torso, which also includes his head after this car accidentally ran over him. That's the very latest reporting live in Sterling Heights with breaking news, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Our other top story tonight in an unprecedented move. The federal government is serving search warrants on the homes of not one, but two current and former United Auto Workers Union presidents. The raids at the homes of Gary Jones and Dennis Williams, part of the ongoing investigation into union corruption that sent a UAW vice president and several other officials to prison. Rod Maloney now live outside Jones House, which is in Canton Township. Uh, the timing issue is rather big here for the union, Rod. Uh, Devin, there, there are a lot of reasons why the timing is an issue. For, uh, for one thing, they're talking about having the uh, strike authorization vote for national contract coming up on Friday. But we'll talk more about that later. Let's talk now about the fact that the IRS and the FBI were here most of the day. They've packed up now. But they had served search warrants on five other locations, all having to do with this scandal. So shocking, yes, is that it's UAW presidents, but also, again, that timing. It looked like any other FBI raid, the IRS in tow. They pulled bags and boxes of evidence from this Canton home. Neighbor J. Kevin Telepo watched with curiosity. Uh, looking through this binoculars, it uh, looks like one of the gentlemen was sitting on the garage floor going through some wads of cash. And it uh, looks like they were just documenting some things that may have been on the property. What makes this so surprising, the home is where UAW President Gary Jones lives. The very same Gary Jones that earlier this year said to union membership. I am deeply saddened and irritated that some members of this union and some leaders in the auto companies exploited their positions to benefit themselves. It frustrates me and I know it frustrates you. The FBI and IRS also served similar search warrants at a St. Louis UAW hall and Jones's home there. He worked there before Detroit. But it's bigger than Jones. The FBI confirms it served a search warrant in Los Angeles. Target, home of retired UAW President Dennis Williams. What's more, the same scene played out at a Black Lake summer home. The UAW is building for Williams up north. It's all connected to the corruption scandal that sent former FCA UAW Vice President Norwood Jewell to jail. His predecessor, General Holifield, died before prosecutors moved on him. Instead, they convicted his widow and sent her to jail for tax evasion. And today in federal court, the Fed arraigned former UAW GM chief of staff to the vice president, Gary Miles, for $2 million in fraud against the union. He'll plead guilty in federal court next week. 
All right, well, we uh, have so much to talk about here, but let's get to what the UAW was saying about this. And uh, they had a, a definitive statement saying, quote, there was absolutely no need for search warrants to be used by the government today. The UAW has voluntarily responded to every request the government has made throughout the course of its investigation. Now, we want to make clear that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. On the flip side of that, however, is that this has been a long-going case. We've seen a lot of raids like this, and so far they have nine convictions in this case. So we're going to be following this very closely in the days ahead. Devin, back to you. Go back to the timing that we mentioned earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. More about what grabs your attention about that here, Rod. Yeah, Devin, look, this is the height of the national contract negotiation yep. with the domestic three, okay? That's huge because it sets the tone for everything. And, of course, there is that concern that now that there may not be trust with the leadership of the UAW, and then, of course, what does this mean when they get to the bargaining table and what kind of leverage does it give the car companies that the UAW leadership is having legal trouble? So a lot of things to consider here as we move forward. In fact, the contract runs out, the national contract runs out on September. September 14th. So much intrigue to it just about two weeks away. All right, Rod. All right, let's now get to new information in a deadly house fire in Waterford Township. Police now confirm it. This is being investigated as a homicide. That news comes as witnesses say they saw a man at that home before the fire started. Let's get to Coco McAvoy. She's live in Waterford tonight. And Coco, do police have a good description of who they're looking for? So the physical description of the suspect is fairly vague at this time, but police say he's known to the community here because they say he would often mow the victim's lawn. And you can see now that neighbors have set up a memorial in her honor. Want him up here, the teddy bear? No. A memorial now stands outside of a home on North Lynn where a woman was killed in a house fire. Neighbors like Liz Hart are in disbelief. I just can't believe she's gone. I kind of ha have a little bit of an anger about it. Because police are investigating the woman's death as a homicide after digging through evidence left behind in the fire yesterday morning. Very scary, alarming, and, and I hope they find whoever did it. Police suspect a man who would often cut the woman's lawn could be to blame. He was spotted by witnesses at her house, so officers went door to door today asking neighbors if they've seen him since. Hart remembers seeing the man from time to time in the past. No, he would be over there and um, do his job and he would load up his mower and leave. And uh, uh, sometimes he would go in her home. Police are waiting to release the victim's name, but neighbors describe her as a loving mother to a young boy. In the short time that I've known her, um, she's just this amazing person but I think she was just very trusting. Now police need help tracking down the person who killed her. I just hope that they uh, find out what happens sooner than later. And police say they are waiting on the complete autopsy results before they release the victim's name. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Okay, Coco, a Detroit man charged with sexually assaulting a woman and injuring her son leading to his death learned his fate today. Michael Brown is being sentenced to a maximum of 25 years in prison. Back in late 2018, the woman's infant son was transported to Sinai Grace Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. The judge making his decision on the ruling today in court. I find that behavior disgusting. <coughs> and I don't think it takes a real man to do that. And um, I am going to reluctantly follow this sentence agreement, which was entered into by the prosecutor's office, the defense attorney, and yourself. In addition to Brown's conviction, he must also register as a sex offender. Now, the Detroit City Council has voted to make the block of Woodward in front of the Spirit of Detroit a statue, a permanent public space. The city is investing $800,000 to improve it. Jason Colthorpe has a look at what's in store for Spirit Plaza. When they shut down both sides of Woodward a couple of years ago, no one knew what to think. And now, just look around. And this is just the beginning. This is kind of a place that you don't want to leave. The now permanent Spirit Plaza does make you feel like staying a while. Erica Hill from Detroit Parks and Rec says more and more people are taking advantage of that. When you walk through here and you see everything that's happening, what do you yes. think? 
I think this is a space that we've all been waiting for. I think this is the best place to enjoy lunch, uh, have a quick meeting, enjoy some music, uh, maybe catch a dance lesson. <laughs> An $800,000 improvement will include tearing out the median and adding a stage, kids play area, and more seating. And we're excited that we can uh, have a venue where people can spend time after work and spend time on the weekends in a safe environment. I think it's a good idea. I think last time I came out here, actually, I was bummed because when I was done with my meeting, it was cleared out. And I was like, oh, Bob, <laughs> like, all the food trucks were gone. I think it's fun for everyone little getaway during the middle of the day. I think it's terrible. But some people still can't get over what this plaza has done to traffic here at one of downtown's arteries. You can't even turn around. You just have to, you have to get out and walk. You can't drive down with your car. And I think it's terrible. I think it's, it, it just messes up the uh, downtown. We found out that there was some inconvenience, but we're also we're downtown. And having traffic problems to me means that we are growing as a city and we're healthy. The big jazz fest is this weekend over at Hart Plaza and they don't want to upset that. So construction on the new Spirit Plaza won't begin until next Wednesday, but you'll see the big changes very soon. In downtown Detroit, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Should go fairly quickly too. Construction on Spirit Plaza should be finished by October. Well, nearly five years ago, police thought it was an accident, but not anymore. Head here at five, a stunning twist in a woman's death. An investigator say frozen breast milk blew the case wide open. Ben. Karen, beautiful evening, but something is missing in our forecast. We'll see if that comes back and big changes for the holiday weekend.